Of all the dozens of X-planes that have been built, only one, the X-15, has achieved a similar legendary status to the X-1 in which Chuck Yeager broke the sound barrier. The X-15 was also a rocket plane, but instead of maxing out at two and a half times the speed of sound, it eventually reached more than Mark 6, and flew so high that for minutes at a stretch on some missions, it wasn't an aircraft but a spacecraft plunging through the near airless void 50 or 60 miles above the ground. Thirteen flights of the X-15 by eight different pilots met the Air Force's criterion for a space flight and earned their pilots the right to be called astronauts. The X-15 was a collaborative project between the US Air Force and Navy and NASA with an airframe built by North American Aviation and an engine supplied by Reaction Motors, the 50-foot-long plane was the first to be designed specifically to cope with the unusual demands of hypersonic speeds, those above about Mark 5.5. The wedge-shaped tail surfaces were to give directional stability at speeds where airfoils of a more conventional shape wouldn't have been effective. The large upper and lower fins and the downward slant of the stubby wings were intended to keep the aircraft stable during steep climbs and at high altitudes. Stability was only one of the big challenges of hypersonic flight, another was overheating caused by friction with the high-speed air. Designers knew that some parts of the plane, like the nose and wing edges, would reach temperatures above 650 Celsius, so they needed a metal that would maintain its strength when this hot. In the end, they chose titanium, with a covering of the incredibly tough, heat-resistant nickel-chromium alloy called Inconel X. Like the X-1, the X-15 was carried up by a mothership, a giant B-52 bomber, to an altitude of 40,000 feet. After being released, its powerful rocket engine fired for about 85 seconds, burning up to 15,000 pounds of fuel in that time, and pushing the plane and its pilot to accelerations of as much as 4G. From drop to landing, an entire flight would last about 12 minutes. Among those who flew the X-15 was Neil Armstrong, the first man on the moon, less well known as Joseph Walker, a NASA test pilot who can claim another remarkable record, the first man to fly into space on two different occasions. A veteran of World War II, Walker had been raised on a farm in Pennsylvania and showed an engineering talent and a thirst for knowledge early on. After the war, he joined NACA's Aircraft Engine Research Lab in Cleveland as an experimental physicist and later became a test pilot at the Edwards Flight Research Facility alongside Edwards Air Force Base. There he flew a variety of experimental aircraft including the X-1 and its variants and later X-Planes. In 1958, Walker was picked to take part in the Air Force's Man in Space Soonest program, aimed at putting an American in space before the Soviet Union. The program was cancelled after a few months and replaced by NASA's Project Mercury. Only two men from the Man in Space Soonest program would go on to reach space, Neil Armstrong and Walker. These two were also among the select few to pilot the Lunar Landing Research Vehicle, a notoriously hard-to-fly contraption used to simulate the descent of the Apollo lunar module onto the surface of the Moon. Walker was the first to lift off in the LLRV on October 30, 1964, taking it for three flights, lasting a total of just under a minute, to a peak altitude of 10 feet. In 1960, Walker became the first NASA pilot to fly the X-15 and the second X-15 pilot of all, following Scott Crossfield, who ran initial tests on behalf of the manufacturer North American Aviation. On his maiden outing in the X-15, Walker was shocked by the plane's brutal acceleration. Walker went on to fly the X-15 a couple of dozen times twice in succession in 1963 to heights of more than 62 miles, which in the eyes of both the US Air Force and International Federation of Aeronautics, FIA, counts as the edge of space. 
On July the 19th, he peaked out at 65.8 miles, and a month later, bettered that by going to 67 miles, travelling over 3,700 miles per hour on both occasions. The first of these flights made Walker the first US civilian in space and the second civilian astronaut in history, after the Soviet Union's Valentina Tereshkova, who wasn't in the military at the time of her trip into orbit, the second made him the first person to go into space twice, according to Air Force and FAI rules. No manned plane would beat Walker's X-15 record altitude until Virgin Galactic's Spaceship One soared to over 69 miles in 2004.